So we see dystonia all the way from birth again to centenarian, so you can see it in all age groups. It has some predilection for some of the specific disorders to attack young children and adolescents and young adults, which makes it a little bit more you know, um, devastating in terms of the impacts on families and people growing up and trying to go to school and, and school life. The disorder itself, when I trained, was considered to be rare. And each year it gets more common as people are beginning to understand that it's actually existing in the population, but we haven't known what to call it, and so we've been underestimating its incidence. So there's no new epidemic of dystonia. It's just that there's more of it there than we knew before. And so dystonia used to be like a one in nine or one in 10 disease. So one case for every 10 cases of Parkinson disease in a movement disorders clinic. And now uh, it's more like a one in three disease where we're seeing it much more commonly. And at University of Florida, we follow one of the largest cohorts of dystonia in the world. We follow over 700 patients. And it is very common to see in those 700 patients dystonic manifestations. But if we actually look at our Parkinson patients, almost all of our Parkinson patients have some dystonia as part of their Parkinson. Remember, it's a lot of the same circuitry. A lot of those cells are talking together and causing similar movement disorders. We see it in some of our other Parkinsonian syndromes. We even see it in some of our tremor disorders and occasionally in Tourette syndrome. So, so dystonia is ubiquitous, meaning it's, it's all over the place. You just have to look for it and it's very treatable. So there are approaches that we can use such as medications. We actually inject botulinum toxin, not for the wrinkles, but it was there for dystonia before it was there for the wrinkles. And, uh, and we have really outstanding surgeries like deep brain stimulation surgery where we can tickle not just one target in the brain, but now over the last several years we're learning different targets for different patients so we can tailor the therapy for dystonics. And remember when we turn on that therapy, nothing happens. It's, it's an amazing disease and then slowly the brain will remodel in response to the stimulation and the patients will, will improve. And so it's, it's, it's very unique in both its presentation and in its treatments. We also involve a complete interdisciplinary team. So we use our therapists. We use our physical therapists, our occupational therapists, our speech therapists. We will inject Botox to restore people's voices with dystonia. And so you've heard some radio, famous radio personalities have dystonia. We might have put a little Botox in and you can tell closer to their Botox treatments, they speak a little better. And then as the Botox wears off toward the end of their treatment, you can see it comes back. And so it's, it's a very um, interesting disorder, but one that is uh, addressable. And so patients should realize that if they have a funny movement disorder, it might be dystonia, it might be tremor, it might be a combination, it might be Parkinson or Tourette, they should get in and get diagnosed because there's so many things we can do for, for these groups of patients.